Hi, I'm Emily Baldwin reporting for ESA Web TV and I'm with Colin Snodgrass who led the observing campaign from Earth towards Comet 67P. Colin, we actually already knew a few things about the comet before Rosetta arrived. What were those parameters and, and how did our picture change? Yeah, so because we knew that Rosetta was going to this comet, we tried to find out as much as we could in advance by observing with telescopes from the ground. So we had some idea about the size of the comet and that its rotation period was about 12 hours. And those turned out to be about right. So that those were pretty good measurements. And then we also were trying to make some measurements of what shape it would be. Um, so we could plan, you know, fill a landing and so on. Um, but that's very difficult to do with the ground. And although we had some good ideas of some models, when we got there, we, this duck shape was quite a surprise still. So. And then another aspect is uh, the activity and the shape of the coma that you observed, the, the fuzzy atmosphere around the comet. With Rosetta, we saw these very fine jets, big outbursts. How did that compare with the, the structures that we see from the ground? Yeah, so from the ground we see a very different scale of the comet. We see the coma is thousands of kilometers across the tail, is millions of kilometers long. And of course Rosetta is getting only in the very center of this. It's looking at the details and understanding the, the, the comet near the nucleus. Um, so from the ground we see structures in the coma that are you know thousands of kilometers across, so a few large scale structures. Um, but we don't see these very fine structures that, that, that Rosetta sees. So we're still trying to work out actually how you link from the, the many fine structures of the, this sort of fine jets of gas and dust that Rosetta saw to how that links to the, the really large scales. And what do you think some of the, the most important results are that will help guide other uh, observations of other comets that you observe from the ground? So one of the really cool things that Rosetta found was it found that they have seasons of the comet and how much the seasons influence the activity. And when we were monitoring it from the ground, we were searching to try and detect the, the gas coming out of the comet. And for a long time, we just didn't detect this at all. Uh, and then suddenly this really switched on and we were just able to, to follow the gas for a while. And because Rosetta was there, we can understand that in terms of the seasons of the comet, because it turned out that the gas turned on when the southern hemisphere of the comet was illuminated, and so that was more coming from one part of the comet. So that, that idea that you know seasons are very important in understanding comets is something we can apply to others. And Rosetta may have finished collecting its data, but the comet is still there, and in fact it will come back to our skies again. Knowing what you know now, what new observations or other observations do you plan to do when it when it comes back? So yeah, the, the comet at, is at right now about its farthest point from the sun, so then it's turn, turn and start coming back again. And it'll come back in uh, late 2021, it'll be as its closest point to the sun. And that time actually it will be very well placed. So by coincidence, the next time it comes past the sun, at its closest point to the sun, it's also at its closest point to the Earth. So actually the distance between the Earth and and the comet will be uh, less than half of uh, an astronomical unit. So that's the distance between Earth and the Sun. So much closer than it reached at any point during the Rosetta mission. So actually the comet from Earth will appear much brighter next time around. And that's great because it means we can apply lots of other techniques. So I mean, it'll be uh, observable with a relatively small telescope or even good binoculars for, for members of the public. But also it means we can observe it at sort of a thermal infrared wavelengths. And, and uh, with apply techniques that it, we just couldn't last time because the comet didn't get bright enough. So even I could go outside with my binoculars and try and look for 67P? Yes, yeah, with a good pair of binoculars it'll be visible from anywhere in the world in 2021. So I know what I'm going to be doing in uh, 2021. I'm Emily Baldwin, thanks for watching ESA Web TV.